what is up guys today we're taking a look at the five biggest mistakes that low elo players make that will stop them climbing if you enjoyed this video remember to leave it a like i put a lot of effort into this one so if we could hit 5,000 ratings on this video that would absolutely make my day and i'll do some more i have some more ideas like this already this is another video with the lovely people over at pro guide so definitely remember to check them out links are down below now this is stuff that i've seen myself firsthand i've seen in replays seen when i've coached people i've actually watched watched a lot of games for this video and by fixing these it will dramatically help you climb. The first thing is the biggest one, being too passive or too aggressive. The ideal you want is somewhere in the middle, but in reality, most people are at one end or the other. So what is the problem with being too passive or too aggressive though? Too aggressive is probably quite obvious actually, but too passive, probably not so much. Too aggressive will be things like pushing constantly with no wards in lane, trying to fight all the time, trying to dive. This is typically like the guy who is off hunting for kills at 40 minutes into the game. He finds someone, he dives in only to find out the entire team was behind them too. Too passive is actually just as bad. It's really important, probably more important for this video. A lot of people are afraid to make mistakes or they're afraid of dying. So they play safe, they play back and they don't really have any impact. This is also why people don't close out games. They don't push your advantage. You don't take dragons, towers because you're fine right now. You're in the lead. So you might as well just sit back and farm, right? Well, no, actually that's how you lose games. So you need to make plays and you need to end the game. I'm not kidding when I say most high elo games are shorter than low elo ones because people just don't focus on ending the game. I guess that's kind of the way to sum it up actually. Too passive you'll have no impact and too aggressive and you'll have a negative one. The balance is kind of hard to find and it's a constant juggle game to game but it comes back to this idea of calculated aggression. It's aggression that has like some kind of thought or reasoning behind it like we should engage here because I can see one of them bot lanes so it's a 4v5. That is a classic example but if you're too passive you won't take advantage and you won't get the golden stuff you would have from winning that fight. Recognizing this stuff is how you go from not really doing too much or doing average to really carrying a game and climbing. I'm going to kind of put a side note here actually. It's not one of the top five but it fits into this idea of being aggressive. Low elo players don't capitalize on mistakes. If someone is out of position or just stood badly in lane they don't do anything. They let them get away with it. Spotting these mistakes in games seems harder than it actually is. I guarantee you if you record your games and watch them back you'll see so many times where you could have killed your opponent and you'll be like well I just didn't think about it at the time but yeah he has no mana he can't fight me back that's what you want to fix that's what you want to change and the easiest way of doing it is to try and always think can I kill them so second thing on our list poor item builds and this is twofold first thing it doesn't matter if you're 10,000 gold ahead if you put that money into a dead man's plate on Zed or a Zonya Son Maokai you're gonna do pretty much nothing at the end of the day it comes down to what items we have when the fight happens if we don't build properly we're not using using that lead we've gained from a few kills or having more CS than our opponents. And when it comes down to it, if they have better items than us, even if they have less gold, they're going to do more. This is so easily fixable too. You look at websites like op.gg or champion.gg, look at guides on YouTube or pro guides. Like this information is everywhere. You have no excuse. The other problem is people buy the same thing every single game. And that is not how this game works. Sure, you have your core items maybe or the stuff that is optimal, but a lot of it will depend on each game because games can be very different from each other. As an AD carry example, Callista will buy a blade into Runin's most games. That's her core and that doesn't really change too much. Boot Berserkers is more damage, but Swiftness is safer, so that depends on the game. Sterix is really good against AD Assassins, Moore is really good against AP Assassins, and QSS is really good against Crowd Control. Those are three big options that make a very big difference in a game, but I see a lot of people just rush a Bloodthirster third because that's what they used to. Basically, sometimes even though you want that death cap on a Mumu, your team needs an engage and a tank, and so you're going to need to build a bit differently and more tanky this game. The third thing is attitude and this is a big one. League is a team game. There are four other people on your team, but the only person you can control is yourself. Frustration is a big problem at lower elo and even at higher elo actually. A lot of people will blame their team. When they feed, they're like, oh God, not again. Here we go, 0-10 for Euro, thanks man. I think we've all been there. And even when that doesn't happen, League can be a frustrating game at times, but that frustration is making you play a ton worse. If you focus your energy into what you can do and how well you play, then I guarantee that while yet it will still suck, you will not be as frustrated. 
good. It doesn't matter if your top laner has fed his ass off, like try and get fed yourself. Make sure your CS is good, you're winning your lane, and accept that after this game is over, then it's over. You're done with it and you just play again. The more you focus on yourself, the better you'll become and the less frustrated you'll get, so the better you'll play. The other thing is you don't want to be cocky, right? You don't want your ego to get in the way, but you do want to be confident. You need to believe that you are better than the people you play with, and if you aren't, then you will be soon. If you are confident that you deserve better, you will play better, you'll make more plays, and you'll have more impact, and you will climb faster. Fourth thing, champion picks and banning champions. Now, if you just wanna climb, you just want to escape that elo hell that you're in at the moment or get that next rank, then narrow your champion pool down, pick two or three champions, main them, play them all the time, and you will climb faster. One of the things that I see all the time is people play everything. They play what they feel like that day, what their friend told them, what a new skin came out for, what one of my lists has told them is strong. Like, yeah, the champions on my list are strong, but that doesn't mean everyone can suddenly play them. Like, if you pick that champion up, you practice them and do well then that's fine but you can't just play a brand new champion who is OP and expect to win consistently. Sometimes you will get super fed because a champion is strong and you'll be fine but when you're behind you won't know what to do to win and that is where really champion experience comes into play. As an example Cogmore is really strong right now but I don't play much Cog so instead I ban it all the time and I play something that I have hundreds of games of experience on. Now don't pick counters, don't pick what you think is OP, play what you are good at and what you've set out as your main champions. If you can't play these OP champions of the patch that are just very strong, then ban them. It's literally that simple. Just don't give up in champion select. Don't feel like you have to play them or you'll lose. That's what your bans are for. And remember, OP champions are considered OP when they have like a 55% win rate. That means that in 45% of their games, they still lose. Even if they get strong champs, you still have a good chance to win. Final thing is really big too, just don't give up. So many people at lower elo keep saying like open mid now or they're just like well you died twice now this game is over like dude just chill out it's a game this is not a sprint it's a marathon they won that battle but we're gonna win the war or whatever other cheesy line you want me to say to make the point you know those games where you're so far ahead and then suddenly someone gets caught then caught again and you just lose well that sucks right but that's why you don't give up yes you had some pleb on your team who messed it up and threw the game for you but if the enemy team had given up earlier then they wouldn't be there to take advantage. Remember that while you have four plebs on your team who can throw the game, they have five on their team, obviously assuming that you aren't a pleb. In theory, they have just as much, if not more chance of throwing their lead away and making a mistake. You just have to make sure that when they do, you are ready to jump on them. Sure, it sucks when someone feeds and you're behind. It really does. But just wait and see if they're going to make a mistake. Chances are they will and you might actually win. But if you give up, then you're definitely going to lose. And personally, I'd rather take a small chance of winning than none at all. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put a ton of effort into it, so make sure you like it if you did. Thanks again to ProGuides for helping me with the editing on this one you can check them out down below or their youtube on screen now for a bunch of other videos remember to like subscribe comment share here but for now i'm gonna catch you in another video